Hey guys, it's David East, and in this tutorial, we're going to be taking the previous website we built with CSS, and we're going to transfer it to the less version. So in the previous tutorial, we built this with CSS. But ideally, we'd want to use less rather than CSS. And that's because less will allow us to drastically reduce the amount of CSS we write. And also, we can compile multiple less files all into one CSS file. So I'm going to be using the Less app to compile my CSS, which is a free app. You can search Less app online and you can find it. This app was the predecessor to CodeKit. If you need more information on how to compile Less, you can see one of our previous tutorials that will help set you up with that. In my case, every time I save, it will automatically compile out my Less. So I created a folder called Less, and inside I have a Less file called Start. Inside Start, I have a couple comments that annotate out what Less files I'm going to need. So ideally, in this page, we're going to want to source all of our less files in here, and then when we save out, it'll compile into one big CSS sheet. So how do we know which less files to use? Well, we can do a couple things. We can search through the folder structure, or we actually can even look in the manual. In the manual, under the How to Install section, there's a code snippet that tells you the basic less files you need to include in your project. So we'll copy these first, and we'll paste them into our less file. So here at the top, Let's paste in these files. And we can see that we have this way to the startup folder. And we'll just highlight all these. And we'll just do dot dot. And the reason why we need a dot dot is because we need to go up one directory because we're in a folder called less, which is right underneath the root. Dot dot will take us back to the root and then allow us to get into all of these folders. So let's take a look at these files. There's a flat UI config, which is all of the variables that help set up flat UI. And then there's a file for flat UI mixins. And mixins are kind of like functions in less, and they're a powerful way to help us reduce the amount of CSS we write. Then there's a flat UI fix less file. Then we have more common mixins that are more geared towards the startup framework. Then we have some common setup, a navbar setup, and then some other helpers as well. And this is the starting point for all the files you need. But we're going to need a couple more to get our page up and running. We're going to need a copy of flat UI. We're going to need the icon font for startup. And then we're also going to need a helper for the startup kit's headers. So we can go into this flat UI folder. And under less, we can see that there's flat UI dot less. So we can type import. And now we've imported flat UI. And now we need to import our icon font. So we can minimize our flat UI folder. We can go into common files. We'll go into less. And then inside here, we can see iconfont.less. So we'll import that as well. So now we have our icon font imported. And so we just need the startup kit header, which is also located in common files. So we can paste this. And now we have our helper for the header. So the only thing we need to focus on is the actual UI kit blocks that we're using. And below this import are all the blocks we've used. Header 2, header 9, content 3, content 23, content 12, and footer 1. And each one of these blocks will have a respected less file. And we actually can see this in the manual. So in the index page of the manual, we can go into header. And this takes us into the header page. And you've seen this question mark before. And when we click on it, we get little tidbits about how to use it, how to use the CSS version. But then there's how to use the less version. And you can see right here is that we import the UI kit header less header one dot less. So if you're ever looking through the UI kit trying to decide which headers or content or footers you want to use, that question mark will help you locate where that less file is as well, among many other things. So back in our project, we'll take a look at the UI kit folder, and we'll first open header. And as you can see, there's this less folder opened, and this has all of the less files. So we need to import header 2 and header 9. So now we have header 2 and header 9. So we can close out of the header folder, and we can go into the content folder. And inside that less folder, we can see all of the content less files. So we have 3, 23, and 12. And now lastly, we just need to go and get footer 1. So we can see, just like before, there's a less folder for all the less files for the footers. And we just need to grab the first footer. So now as you can see, we have this less file set up. And as I save, it actually goes down into the start.css file. And you can tell that the saving has been successful because we actually see CSS. If there was a problem with our compilation, we would see an error message in here. So let's take a look at our index.html page. We can see in the header tag 
that we have far fewer CSS files now. We only have CSS for Bootstrap, and then we also have CSS that we've compiled from our less right here in start.css. So let's take a look at this code in the browser to see how it looked compared to our pure CSS version. So our page looks mostly the same, but there are a couple changes. We can see that we have this underline underneath the startup logo. We have some underlines down here too by home page and upcoming events. We also can see that we have this issue where our icon fonts aren't showing up. So what's going on? Well, we can open up the JavaScript console and we can see that we have a lot of failed to load resources. We can see that we're missing some of our icon files. And also, if we were to resize this page, we can also see that we're not getting our menu icon image, so that's missing as well. So let's go back to our project and see what's going on. So let's first focus on why we have some of these underlines. And that's a really easy fix. That's because this flat UI right here needs to be above the flat UI fix.less. So now if we were to go back in our browser, we would see that we wouldn't have that issue with the underline anymore. But we still have the issue with our icon fonts. So let's go into common files and we have the less file open. So let's take a look at icon font.less. And right now, this actually looks like it's right. It's dot dot slash fonts. So that says go up one row and then go to the fonts. And inside fonts, here's the startup icons. However, that's not going to do the job when we're compiling the less because the less compiles to the less folder. So that says go dot dot slash, which is go up to the root. And then in the root, find the fonts folder. And we don't have a fonts folder in the root. So to fix this issue, we're going to find where all these dot dot slashes are. And I'm going to highlight all of them. And now that I have all of them highlighted, we're going to say common files slash fonts. And by not providing the leading slash, it'll start us at the root folder and then go into common files, which will then allow us to go into the fonts folder and that allow us to grab the font files that we need. And this will get us to the fonts we need, but there's a better way of setting up this path. It would be better for us to use a variable rather than hard code this in. So let's go to start less and up top here, we'll make a variable and we'll call it common files path. And that will be common dash files ending with a slash. Now we'll go back into icon font and we'll select all the common files. And you might think that the way to add strings in less is to say common files path plus, but that's not the way string interpolation works in less. So let's undo that. And what we actually want to do is we want to say at sign and then open up this brackets and then close them. And inside of here is where we'll say common files path. So this way, if the startup folder structure ever changes, you'll just need to change that variable rather than changing it in all the places inside of startup. It's okay when it's your own structure to not have to worry about interpolating all the strings, but when you're using a third party resource like the startup framework, you probably want to make as little changes to the actual framework as possible. So by setting up these variables, our changes in the future should be very small. And we'll go back into our start.less, save, and now we'll check it out in the browser. So now we can see that we still have some errors getting some of the files, but those are just the flat UI icons. So now we need to focus on getting the flat UI icons as well as some of the missing images. So let's close out our common files folder and let's go to the flat UI folder. And inside the flat UI folder, we'll go inside the less folder and we'll open up flat UI.less. So we can see that our flat UI file is similar to our start less file and that it has a bunch of children files that it's compiling out. And we can see up here that one of them is the icon font. So if we click on icon font.less, we can see we have our fonts. So just like before, we'll highlight all our dot dot slashes and we'll say flat UI slash fonts. So again, we'll know to go into the root folder, then go into flat UI, and then within there, we can get the fonts. But just like we learned last time, we don't want to hard code these paths because they're inside of the startup framework. So let's create a variable back in start.less. And we'll call this one flat UI path. And now we'll go back into icon fonts. We'll select all the flat UIs. And we'll do our string interpolation. And if you can remember, that's an at sign. And then we do two curly brackets. And then inside here is our variable name. And our variable name is flat UI path. So we'll save in our start.less. 
and now we'll check it out in the browser. So now we can see we don't have any missing assets, but we are still missing one image file, and we don't see an error for it. And that's because we haven't resized our browser. So let's resize it down to the size of a phone, and now we can see down here that we're getting an error where it can't find the menu icon.png. So let's size this back up. And we can see right now that it's looking underneath my user folder and directly into common files. So let's go back and fix that. So now underneath the UI kit folder, we'll go into UI kit header. We'll open up the header 2.less and we'll scroll down and we can see that we have this triple dot dot slash. So rather than the triple dot dot slash, we'll use our path variable. So we'll delete this and start our string interpolation. Now we'll go back to start.less and we'll save it and we'll check it out in the browser. So we don't see any files missing, but we need to resize our browser. And now when we resize it, we don't see any files missing and we actually see our image right here. And when we click on it, we still get that same slide out functionality. And now that it's set up with the less version, we're ready to do some serious customization. And in the next tutorial, we're going to use less to completely customize this website. We're going to be using some custom image assets, and we're going to be changing some of the colors and some of the structure. And it's going to look like something completely of our own. So just like always, I'm David East. If you have any questions or want something explained in more details, you can leave me a comment or you can hit me up on Twitter.